to our border and a visit this week from Republican Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush, son of Jeb Bush, nephew of former President George W. Bush, and grandson of former President George H.W. Bush. I got a chance to speak with him about his visit and the issues facing the border as a whole. All right, Commissioner Bush, thank you so much for joining us. You were in town to see the border. Uh, where have you gone and what have you seen? Well, Daniel, thank you for welcoming me. It's great to be with you. It was a fascinating experience spending three hours with some of our nation's finest, uh, close to Monte Cristo by Monument 3, and, and looking at the what is estimated to be the third or the fourth largest trafficked area of the entire U.S.-Mexican border. So understanding some of the challenges, some of the complexities of what these incredible agents face every day was uh, part of our trip here to El Paso, and looking forward to spending more time back in uh, this great part of the state. What were some of the challenges that the agents told you they're facing? Well, they're saying that uh, they're seeing a, a move of the likes of which they haven't seen in recent times, uh, that they are overwhelmed and overmanned in many respects, but that uh, with the support of the state of Texas and uh, hopefully with more support from Washington, D.C., they'll be able to take on this problem. Uh, they have great also sister agencies in our federal government that are helping to process uh, many of the migrants that, that are seeking uh, to come to our country. But more importantly, it's dealing with the triaging of risks that they face every single day on the border and understanding the true threats out there, namely the, the cartels that are placing pressure and making a fortune off of uh, sending children our way. Could you get a sense of their morale? How did they feel? Well, you know, they're a very resilient bunch. Uh, they're, you know, when you look at the unfinished areas of the wall that have been um, torn down in some areas and not funded and fully constructed in other areas, they're actually rolling up their sleeves and on duty uh, reconstructing areas of this fence uh, with their own engineering and with their own know-how. Uh, to me, that speaks to a very resilient core that's rolling up their sleeves, focused on solving problems, taking the politics out, and looking for solutions to better strengthen uh, security in this, in this area of the state. Speaking of the fence, a lot of the fence that you see here in El Paso was put in place by your uncle, former President George W. Bush. Do you think that barriers work? Well, I listen to agents, and agents tell me that they do. Um, it's not going to be the only solution to the problem in securing our border. There's also virtual technologies that are available that are being developed by Customs Border Patrol, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, we also need to restore some of the policies under the Trump administration, which agents tell me would relieve a lot of pressure for those that are seeking to abuse some of our asylum loopholes that we have on, our, on the immigration books. You're a proponent of reinstating the remain, so-called remain in Mexico policy. Tell us why. So when I talk with agents, whether it's over uh, in the Rio Grande Valley or in this AOR area of responsibility, when I talk with agents, they tell me that is the number one reason by which we can relieve and have an orderly process by which people can come here legally. In, instead of sending a, a message of false hope, which allow drug cartels to transport folks from triangle countries Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, to the Mexican border and, and to communities like El Paso. So there's a lot we can do in terms of reforming our federal immigration laws, but in terms of an executive order or an executive policy that turn the switch in terms of how people perceive the porousness of the border, that's the one that agents tell me time and time again. It seems like the Biden administration is kind of saying that this is going to, they're ready to play the long game when it comes to working with the Central American countries to kind of sort out the root causes as to why so many people are coming here. What are your thoughts on that? We should also play a long game strategy, but we should also have conditions by which we fund many of these countries. So one of the proposals that we've seen from the White House is to directly wire cash. And U.S. News & World Report just put out a study that shows that the Northern, that the Northern Triangle countries are three of the most corrupt countries that you'll find uh, in the world. And so maybe we should have conditions when we do that, when we're looking at economic development and the, and the violence. I mean, look, a lot of the, the migrants that are coming here are escaping very difficult uh, situations. I think everybody gets that. Um, but it's the false promises that are coming from D.C. that allow the cartels to manipulate the situation that is causing the problem. Look, I'm for the long-term solutions. Let's play the long game. Uh, but there's also a short-term uh, situation that we also need to address. Before I let you go, it's been widely reported that you're considering a run for attorney general. Have you made a decision? Do you want to break any news here on KTSM? <laughs> well, you'll be the first to know. We look forward to making an announcement. We're focused on legislative session. Uh, there are serious concerns about our current attorney general 
who is under uh, FBI investigation, and several of his lieutenants have alleged everything from bribery to corruption. And we'll allow the authorities to pursue that, but I'm focused on solutions for Texans, and right now spending a lot of time with law enforcement, with Customs Border Patrol, really addressing these challenges and finding some good solutions. Just want to mention, you said KTSM will be the first to know. We're going to hold you to that. <laughs> All right. Land Commissioner George P. Bush, thank you, sir, so much for being with us.